Good morning guys and welcome back to another video on the Retro Brown channel. Today we're doing a solo run with Azumarill in Pokemon Gold. We've already done the Marrow run and it didn't go very well. So I'm really hoping Azumarill can kind of save this line from being terrible in Gen 2. Let's have a quick chat about Azumarill. It's got a base stat total of 410. Mostly put into its HP and its special defense and defense. So we've got a bulky Pokemon here for probably the first time in quite a while. But it means its attack, special attack and speed are pretty abysmal at 50 apiece. It's, yeah. It's going to be interesting, this one. We're going to set the day to Sunday, which means that when we actually get to Goldenrod, we can get the return TM. And we're going to shift around our tech speed and the battle scene off, because it saves me a bit of time when I'm doing all of this. Anyway, let's get started with the run. We go and choose our Azumarill for the run. We get pretty good starting moveset. We've got a bit of type coverage with Tackle and Water Gun, but we've also got Defense Curl and Tail Whip. Defense Curl is going to be very key to this run, as you will soon find out. Just going to go with the name Azu for the Azumarill, and we will get on with the run. If you've been enjoying my videos lately, YouTube algorithm has been completely messing me around. Please drop this video a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. This brings us to the very first rival battle. And we're at level 6 here after a tiny little bit of training on the way to Mr. Pokemon's house. But this Chikorita is just nothing to worry about. Tackle is more than enough to take it down. We get level 7 and we can move on to naming our rival. And just while we're having a talk about it, the level up moveset's not too bad at all. TM moveset as well, pretty damn good as well. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm quite content with what we're going to get in this run. So our rival for today is going to be William Cherry. He's a subscriber that joined us in the month of Retro Brown back in December. Thank you for subscribing and I hope you're enjoying the videos. So let's get on with this run now we've picked up a Zoomerill. First off we have Birdkeeper Ape in Faulkner's Gym and I always show this battle because his spear is actually kind of a threat. It's got quite high attack. Peck is pretty good with the stab bonus but a Zoomerill just walks its way through this entire gym because of water gun with it being a special move yeah like his pokemon don't really have much of a leg to stand on we get up to level 11 just before going to falconer and yeah i am going to use a portion here just just to give us a little bit of um leeway with this and let's see how we do against falconer on our first attempt his level 7 pidgey is not going to be a problem really whatsoever the worst thing that can happen is we're going to get mud slapped which Considering it's resisted, well, not resisted, it's not super effective. He won't really go for it. He just goes for Gust, and we take quite an easy win against the first gym leader. We pick up TM37, Mud Slap, which I might use. I, I might use it, yeah. There might be a, a need for it in this run. So, we're against the rival in Azalea Town now, and we've also picked up Rollout, which, yeah, fantastic move. How have we picked up Rollout? Level 15. That's why we picked it up. <laughs> I was just looking back over our level up moveset. We actually learned a lot of moves very early on that are very, very good. But it's not enough in this fight. Because we got put asleep and paralyzed, yeah, we didn't really do too well. But this is why we wanted Defense Curl, because it boosts the power of Rollout. And that means that when we can actually wake up from this bloody ghastly... We can get two rollouts set up before going into the Bayleaf with a lot more HP to work with. We tank it on three HP going into the Zubat and we outspeed to take the win. I'm kind of annoyed we're at level 17 for that, but we needed that extra bit of HP from the level ups to make this actually possible. Meaning we can now move on to Bugski. And considering we've got rollout, which is super effective against bug type Pokemon, this is going to be a very easy fight. We're not even going in at full HP. We're not even at half HP. One rollout takes out both Kuna and Metapod. And now we're on third rollout and it's a one shot on Cypher. Easy fight. And we can move on to Goldenrod with the probably the biggest challenge of the run so far. Which of course is Whitney. This is going to be a rollout battle really. We need to set up our defense curls. Set up our rollouts. And as soon as we can get that set up. Even at three rollouts the milk tank can still tank one. But it's, it's a little too late. Mill tank goes down we get the plane badge. We get a Tract, which is going to be... I can't remember if we are a male or female Azumarill. 
we are male, so it means that, to be fair, with the major battles in this in Pokemon Gold, the majority of their Pokemon are going to be male. Uh, yeah, they're going to be male, which means that Attractor really isn't going to be a good strategy for us in this fight. Morty, now we've picked up Surf in Ecrity City, is going to be a very easy fight. It's a first time win, and so far we have beaten every single gym leader on our first attempt. Which, <laughs> comparing this to the Marrow run, yeah, this is a massive change. We really didn't do too well against most of the gym leaders with just a Marrow, but yeah, that evolution is definitely helping us out. We make our way over to Cyanwood, we pick up our Shuckle, and we go and pick up the super the secret portion, which in one of the last videos I completely forgot and I had to backtrack. But this brings us to the Dojo Brothers. The Black Belt Brothers here, they're not too much of a problem. The problem is that we just don't deal out enough damage out from the Hitmonlee, meaning we've got le about half HP to go against Hitmonchan. And this, this Hitmonchan has Thunder Punch. Thankfully, it doesn't use it here and we can take a win. But we need to go back and heal before going against Chuck. Now, considering we were a water type Pokemon, it means that his Polyrath is not going to be used in Surf. It's going to be using Dynamic Punch. And considering Surf is probably our best move, we really want to get our rollout set up, set up as quick as we can. It goes for a Mind Reader and make, gives us the chance to actually get our fifth rollout in. We can track back over to... Olivine City now, and we can go against Jasmine. Now, considering Water Type is good against Steelix, I thought I'd go into this having a very easy run. Then I remembered she's got Magnemites, the electric Steel type Pokemon. And this fight pretty much comes down to whether we get confused or whether we get paralyzed, because that's what the Magnemites are there to do. They're there to set up those status effects, and then once they've set them up, they will start spamming Thunderbolt. And yeah, each time it was came down to really bad RNG. I get para confused on this attempt, and Thunderbolt just does tons of damage leading us to the Steelix. We do get breakout of confusion, we hit a massive surf, but she uses a retroactive hyper portion, and it's just not enough to take down the Steelix in time. So a third attempt against Jasmine. This is the first gym leader that we've actually lost against so far as well. And that's six gyms into it, which I think is pretty damn good for an Azumarill. We managed to get through both of the Magnemites without getting paralysed or confused, meaning the Steelix becomes incredibly easy now. And that, that had to happen at level 35, which is decent level for this point in the game. And that brings us over to the Lake of Rage. We need to go and complete the Rocket side quest, which I'm not going to spend too much time on in this video because, well, it's a boring part of the game. The level curb really doesn't help out with this. So let's jump ahead and go against the executives. And they're not really too much of a problem. They're probably around about nearly half our level right now. But Surf is still not taking out these Pokemon in one shot, which is kind of worrying. But we've got Ice Punch for the Murkrow and the Gloom, which make this quite an easy fight. What's going to be a harder fight, really, is going to be the rival in the underground. It's probably one of the harder uh, rival fights in the game next to Azalea, but before that, we need to go against Price while we're here. Price is not going to be a problem. We've got a Rock-type move. He's got Ice-type Pokemon. As long as we can set up our rollouts, this is going to be very, very easy. We run a second turn rollout there. And now we're just sweeping through his entire team. Pilus Wide is out last, and it's still a one-hit KO. Level 41, so what are we expecting here? Pick up Icy Wind, which we can learn, but I don't think I'm going to go ahead and learn it. Ice Punch is a much better move. And we can go against the Director now. So he's got six Pokemon, which is ludicrous for this point in the game, really. He's got six, five Coughings and one Weezing. And it's just... It's just stalling us for time on actually completing this run. The Weezing can actually tank one of our Surfs, but each of the Coughings goes down to one each. We get, quite a, we get a level up in this fight as well, and we're at level 44 going into this. The last move we can actually learn in our, t our level up moveset is Rain Dance. And considering we don't get Thunder, I'm not. I'm debating whether it's actually a good idea to use Rain Dance, because it does boost the power of water moves, but at the same time, I think I'd rather just keep that move slot for a better move. Against the rival, once we've got our rollout set up, it is a very easy fight. 
after we've done five rollouts, the Sneasel has to take two to get taken down. But we take the rival out, and William Cherry does not beat us on this attempt. He hasn't beaten us since his earlier town now. And finally, the last executive of the Rocket side quest. We go into this fight paralyzed and at half health. Houndour takes down a lot of HP. We get hit by Sludge, we're on 30 HP going against this last Houndoom. And if it had gone for any other move apart from Smog, we would have lost this attempt first time. I was really pushing my luck here and I need to start really healing before major battles. This brings us to probably the part of the video that I am very, very excited for. Because in this video, in this run, I had... <laughs> Basically, this has never happened before in any of my runs. In even my Gen 1, well you can't do it in Gen 1, but any of my Gen 2 runs so far. It's taken nearly 50 videos to get to this point and as you will see we are going to find a shiny pokemon a full odd shiny pokemon in gen 2 and i was buzzing at this i have never found a shiny pokemon apart from the red gyarados in gen 2 in all of the years i've played it i was absolutely buzzing with this i mean i, I completely miss messed up on trying to catch it so we're gonna have to kill out this <laughs> this variant of um, Spine Up. <laughs> of all Pokemon, to try and find for your first shiny in such a long time. And it's a bloody Swine Up. <laughs> R.I.P. Swine Up. Anyway, Claire is a very easy fight. We get the freeze on the third Dragon M. We start setting up our rollout. Kingdra is going to be a nightmare. But. A couple of rollouts taken down, and this is why I wanted to keep Defense Core rollout this far into the run. We are actually making amazing time here. Considering how bad my roll was, I didn't think that Azumarill would be, do, be doing such a good run. It is a bulky tank, and it even gets better in later generations when it gets that fairy type. But in Gen 2, it's a very mediocre Pokemon from face value. But right now, it's actually doing really, really well. This brings us to our final fight against William Jerry. And we are sweeping his team. We are level 54 here going into the Elite Four. And we do get poisoned by the Meganium. But it's not enough and we get to level 55 before taking out his Haunter and his final Kadabra. I don't know why they couldn't have given them a Gengar and an Alakazam at this point. But either way, we move on to the Pokemon League and we begin our final challenge of Johto. We always pick up our full restores, of course, because we need around about, well, you'd say, you probably need about five, but I always pick up nine anyway, just because we're going to be going into Kanto next after this, and we start our fight with Will. Now, majority of his Pokemon can be taken out with Ice-type moves, so we're going to take out the Zatu, the Executor, and thankfully we did not get Leech Seeded there. Jinx can go down to a Rollout or a Surf, well, a couple of them either way. Probably could have used Return there, and then Slowbro, the one that I was most worried about, comes out. It hits hard, but Rollout is just too powerful for it, and the final Rollout takes a good first win against Will. I probably could have done that a lot cleaner, but either way, we've got the first time win. I'm happy with that, and we move on to Koga. Now, considering we've got Ice-type moves, we've got Rock-type moves, this should be quite an easy fight, but this is where... I just get completely trolled by the RNG in this attempt. It's reduced our accuracy, we can't set up our rollout enough, and we take so much damage from the Ariados. Considering how much I slagged off um, Ariados and Spinarak in my videos, it really did a number on us here, and I was not expecting that. When it brings it to Muk, uses Minimize, Sludge Bomb, and that brings us onto the Crobat, which is going to be a lot faster than us, and takes us down with a Wing Attack. Yeah, we lost to Koga. So let's try this again. We need to take that Ariados out before it can set up too much. And that brings us to the Venomoth. Now we've got full HP here. We can tank Psychic like it's no tomorrow. Fortress is probably just going to set out spikes, but goes down to two Surfs. Muck comes out. And a couple of Surfs takes it down, but we are poisoned now, which is not a good sign. And it's badly poisoned. Which means we're going to take more and more damage every single turn, but Azumarill hangs on with 15 HP to get the win against Koga. Bruno, he's better in Gen 2, but we are going to take quite a lot of damage. 
A lot of his Pokemon do hit hard, and they've got Thunder Punch on the Hitmonchan. The Hitmonlee is going to be... Eh, it's going to be a problem with High Jump Kick, but we still managed to take it down. But the Machamp is the bigger problem, and we've ran out of Surf PP. And what I was hoping for here was to get a freeze on the Machamp to make this possible. I probably should have went for Rollout, but we do take a loss to the Machamp's Cross Chop. So that's two losses in the Elite Four. And... I feel like Azumarill is now starting to trail off in, its, in how well it's performing. Again, I should have probably went into that fight with full Surf PP. It would make it a lot easier, but yeah. I sometimes forget. I mean, I'm on a human. What can you expect? We take out the matchup with two Surfs, and we're on to the final Onyx, which goes down to a final Surf. We take the win at level 58, moving us on to Karen. And Karen's got quite a diverse team for it all being pretty much dark type pokemon her lead umbreon is an absolute tank i mean this is the battle of the tanks right now but free surfs takes it down or onto the vile plume now if we get hit by a grass type move we're gonna really be in a bad position but we managed to evade bringing us to the gengar where it used a curse and we're onto murkrow now one ice punch will take it down and last up is houndoom who does a big amount of damage with crunch but a surf is all we need to take the win bring us on to the champion lance with his illegal dragonites they shouldn't be evolved to level 55 but he's got free below level 50 <laughs> so how are we going to start this fight well a lot of his pokemon are flying type pokemon meaning rollout is the perfect move for this entire fight and this becomes the easiest elite four fight in the entire run because we've got rollout because we've got ice punch we are completely completely stacked to take out his entire team with relative ease we hit level 60 and an aerodactyl comes out two ice punches will take it out or we could have used surf either or and final charizard goes down to a surf meaning we've become the johto champion with just an azumarill but as as we know this is gen 2 that is not the end of the game we have now got a tackle canto with blue and red we finished the Johto at level 60 at 4 hours 13 game minutes. That's quick compared to a lot of my runs in Gen 2. I'm very, very happy with this. So, can we keep up that time in Kanto? It generally takes me around about an hour to complete Kanto and get all the way to red. Or at least an in-game time. So let's see how we do. There's a lot of moves that we haven't used in our TM moveset that we really could use, but I'm not too sure what's going to be the best combination at this point. We definitely need Surf. I mean, we've, it's a HM move. In early generations, you can't get rid of HM, so we have to use Surf. But either way, let's see how we do against Blue. He's got a very varied team, quite a stacked team, really. We need to take him out very quickly, which is not our forte, considering our 50 base speed. Executor is quite an easy fight. It does set up Sunny Day, which is a problem. But I'm going to start setting up my rollouts against Alakazam. Our special defense is decent. And annoyingly, he does use Recover quite a few times until the Reflect fades. And then Rollout, yeah, we, we really, didn't, really didn't strategize well in this fight. So let's try this again. We're at level 69, my, one of my favorite numbers. <laughs> and we're just going to go for some rollout straight away. We need to take out as many of his Pokemon as possible, as quick as possible. The Alakazam was the blocker in the last one, but he hasn't set up Reflect this time, meaning two returns can take him out. We are onto the Gyarados, and here again we can set up our rollouts, although we're on 32 HP. Arcanine is out next. Extreme Speed takes us down to 5, and we get a critical surf. That was clutch. Because Rhydon cannot survive a surf. We've managed to do that 5 HP. That's incredible. Either way, that brings us to the final fight. And we have changed our moveset around a little. We've got Surf, Swagger, Blizzard and Rest. Rest is an absolutely crucial move when going up against Red on your own. But it's still not going to be enough. And even as you can see here, we are struggling against the Pikachu. We can't deal enough damage out to take it out in one. We can't outspeed to rest up in time most times. And yeah, we can't get that swagger on 
to make sure we can take it down and hit for it to hit itself. So we take a first loss against just the Pikachu. So I level up a little bit. We're at level 76 now. We hit the Swagger on the first turn and he does big damage to himself. Meaning the Venusaur is out next. And this became the next big blocker because Venusaur is also very tanky and sets up Sunny Day. So we need to try this again. We leveled up even more to level 85 and at only at level 85 could we start taking out that Pikachu in one surf. When we get the Swagger off on the Venusaur it gives us enough chance. Wow that, that freeze is very very clutch. <laughs> This might be the, the attempt here, guys. So we need to set up Swagger, because then it gives us a chance for them to hit themselves, deal some damage out, and also for us to get a free turn in. It also gives us a chance to set up Rest, and give us more chance to wake up before they actually do more damage to us. And we lose to Snorlax, because we can't deal enough damage out. <laughs> attempt 4. Level 91. Yeah, I tried a lot of times to level 85 and it just wasn't working. So we had to level up a tiny bit more just to see how we could do. And it was only at level 91 where this started to become a lot more possible. I mean, I don't use held items in these runs. If I used held items, I could probably do this about 10 levels lower. But yeah, it's part of my rule set that I do not use held items on these runs. Because I feel like I, I like that Gen 1 mechanic where you don't have held items to affect that. But with Gen 2, you don't have the badge boost glitch to, like, to spam and get as much, like, stats as you want. You have to really, really work it out. And that's what I like about Gen 2 compared to Gen 1. Gen 1's still probably my favourite, but either way, that's what makes Gen 2 very interesting on a solo run. We finally got through most of his Pokemon and we're on to his second from last Blastoise. We hit the Swagger, we hit the Surf. And only last up is his Charizard, which of course is going to go down to a super effective surf, meaning we take the win. And I'm very annoyed that we're level 91 to do that, considering how good that run was up until this point. Yeah, I'm really not happy at that. So, level 91, let's see what our stats were. We had a massive spike in special defense and I don't know where that came from if I'm being honest but either way it really helped us out we finished on five hours and 40 minutes that is still a very quick run it puts it in the higher tiers of my rankings but yeah I'm very happy with that so let's figure out what we're going to go with next time let's get that wheel span and hopefully we've got a good choice to go with next week First up is Noctowl. That has come up a few times and I do want to do a Noctowl run. Let's see what else comes up. Next up is Stantler. Oh, I always forget about Stantler. They really revived it when they brought in Weird Ear in Gen 8. And last up is Hitmontop. Oh, there's some good choices here. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with Stantler. I think it's going to be the most interesting Pokemon. If you've got to this point in the video, please like and subscribe, you legends. And we will see you in the next video for a Standler only run. Catch you later, bye.